This is obviously fake. A 16 terabyte SSD for $110 sales way past too good to be Trueville, clear into you must have been trying to get ripped off a list. Or at least you would think that. For the average shopper, it is shockingly easy to run into scam products on the world's largest e-commerce platform. Look at this. A quick search for external SSD yields real, 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 real fake on the second line. But come on, Linus, you might say. No one would buy a one-star rated product from OKQKOK, OK OK, which is fair enough. But what about these ones with nice prices, dozens of positive reviews, and prime shipping? Fake, fake, fake. And yet, Amazon is somehow allowing these scammers to not only list their wares, but to achieve prominent positions in search results. What's going on over there, Jeffy? You too busy riding in your rocket to take care of your customers? I mean, maybe. But also, no. The process that these companies use to defraud both unsuspecting shoppers and Amazon themselves is surprisingly savvy. And kind of like draconian anti-cheat methods, cracking down on them could end up harming the legitimate sellers more than it harms the bad actors. Just like it would harm me to not tell you about our sponsor. Build Redux. They make it easy to configure your new build with support guides to help along the way. They also offer competitive pricing as compared to building a PC yourself. Head to buildredux.com slash Linus and start your new build today. Let's open up with a look at our two attempts to play ourselves here. First up is a two terabyte USB 3.1 portable SSD from Lurkser that is $36.99. From the product page on Amazon, it says that its features are three inch hard drive and type C port. Compare that to the $120 of greedy Western brands. And even if it does lack a loop for a strap or some ruggedization, it's a no brainer, right? For a tech minded audience, this difference in price would actually be a huge red flag. But guys, you gotta put yourself in the shoes of your uncle who spends more time de-weeding his garden than defragging his discs. I mean, look at this hand trowel. It's probably not a scam. A 70% discount might not seem like an obvious problem. I mean, even in tech, there are categories like cables, for example, where you could easily spend a fifth of the price if you aren't subsidizing a bloated marketing budget or paying an influencer tax. <coughs> okay, even at the price, that's a good screwdriver. Independently verified, I don't wanna hear about it. LTTstore.com. Let's give this thing a fair shake, right? What the heck? This is not a good sign. <laughs> I already, what are these? It's crap already in ways I couldn't have possibly expected. It comes with a micro B to USB A adapter and a type C to USB A adapter. But even though it's color coded blue, this is in fact a USB 2.0 adapter because you can see the other five pins aren't in there. Okay, extruded aluminum case. I see what you mean about it being difficult to open this thing up. This is gonna not be easy. Once again, USB 3 color coded actually USB 2 cable. Is that actually a standard thing? Like the- Yes. That's like specified by USB yeah, standard. There's some non-standard colors, like Razer does green. Yeah, ones, I've seen that. Like OnePlus does red. I've seen purple ones. I've seen yellow ones for like higher power or whatever. But blue means USB 3, in theory. How suspicious. These two SSDs from very different brands use <laughs> the same elements of their images. Why, why are there pictures of hard drives? to represent SSDs. Does this say it has two SSDs in it? You know what, we'll get to that one later. 19 megabytes per second reads. Ah, I like it. Thank goodness it's type C and <laughs> M.2, it is not. <laughs> High speed, you say. More like speed. I, I don't think that's making it in the video. Is it still running? Yeah, it's just taking absolutely forever to write the test file to it. Something is definitely amiss here, but even though the product page didn't specify a rated speed when we clicked by, it's actually been updated since then to reflect its USB 2-ness. This product isn't necessarily a scam yet. It's just really slow. <laughs> it does take liberal use of the word of the term USB 3. Yeah. Yeah, USB 3-ish. It supports part of the USB 3.0 standard. If you plug it into USB 2. Yeah, if you plug it into a USB 3 port, it will be detected. Now, tell me something, Adam. Do you know the answer to this already? Can I actually play back anything that's on it? Surprisingly, yeah. 
Really? Yeah. I couldn't believe it either because I assumed at first that it would just be like a 32 gigabyte. We've seen that scam before where they just play around with the firmware of the device to make it show a large capacity. But when you actually try to write data to it, it turns out that it's not actually there. And if you try to read it back, it's just gone. I mean, you go look in the, dev the device properties. Here, for we'll this. see. We'll see here. No, because the device properties will report correctly. Oh my goodness. Can we just play this file, please? Here we go. Oh, wow. It's at 100% use playing a video. It is red footage. You put all red footage on it? Because it's four gigabyte increments, so Adam. I can keep loading it and tell when, how much it, when it actually would die. Gosh darn it, Adam. It was a clever maneuver. One of the issues we're running into here is if they are pulling a capacity scam, maybe the actual capacity is 128 gigs or 256 gigs. It would take us forever to fill this thing. Can I play back this file? Yes. Hey, look, it's my baby boy. <laughs> Use space, 176 gigs, okay, free space. Wait, vendor co? <laughs> yes, yes, this is the vendor co product code USB device. <laughs> Just leaving placeholders? I guess assuming they're running a firmware capacity hack is giving them too much credit. Oh, wow, it's so <laughs> It's like I can actually see it looking for the next block of NAND. I don't think I have the patience to find out if they're running a capacity scan. Let's just no, I, it, I, we, I don't care. We, the fact that it put 170 gigs on it yeah. is like actually makes it not a terrible deal. <laughs> what, like $16 for 128 gigs? This drive is copying at zero bytes per second right now, Adam. It's a terrible deal. It's a terrible product. If you can't handle it at its lowest, you don't deserve it at its best. Mm. I need to not stab my hand with this. Okay, well, things are about to get interesting. Hey, there we go. Yep, that is a NAND package. It is actually hot glued and not screwed to the slit. <laughs> what? What appears to be just about the cheapest, smallest controller I can possibly imagine. Can confirm this is not wired for any kind of USB anything other than USB 2. I'm gonna try and peel this glue off and then we can check the part number of this. I pretty much promise you that that is not two terabytes. We just didn't manage to completely fill it up because that would take a long time. Adam, I'm afraid that this may not survive. Oh no. The operation. Okay, here we go. Let's see if we can get a part number off this thing. Zoom in on his face. Stop. <laughs> Chip name, no name two. Perfect, that's really helpful. This is apparently a 64 gigabyte chip. This is the closest match we found. Whoop. It's almost certainly this from Bolo here, which would indicate that this is a 64 gigabyte chip. That means that the way it's continuing to copy more data is that it is deleting older data, which would explain when we're writing to it, the high speed, low speed, because it's not like there's any caching or anything. So it's gotta be deleting stuff in the background. Scam is on. What about this 16 terabyte drive though? At hundred bucks, there is no way that this is real. When you consider that a brand name eight terabyte internal drive will cost more than 10 times this price for a 16 terabyte drive. So we're not gonna waste time pretending this one could be real. We're just gonna skip to cracking it open. Oh, shoot. Ah. And nothing oh. of value was lost. Oh, this one's got a purple USB 2 cable. Cute. Surprise, surprise. It's the exact same. Oh, no, it's not the exact same drive. Oh, what? Did the, did the Chinese scammers rip off the other Chinese scammers? I'm serious. It looks like one of these molds is a ripoff of the other one. Because this one has these, these lines from the mold here in the exact same oval shape as this one. But then this one has marks from the tool pass and this one doesn't. I can't tell who's ripping off who. I can tell that they both ripped off me. Uh, this one just has a micro SD card in it. <laughs> Once again, cheap controller, a little bit of NAND flash and uh, hot glue to the rescue again to keep everything in place. I'm not aware of a 16 terabyte SD card, but who knows, maybe they have some amazing secret technology there that I've never heard of before. 64 gigs again. <laughs> Wait, why am I laughing? I just spent $100 on a 64 gig SD card. That's not funny, that sucks. While I 
and you have the technical knowledge to be wary of stuff like this and have the know-how to verify a product's functionality within that all-important return window, it's easy to imagine that many buyers will inspect their item for obvious damage, then go back to binging Netflix or whatever they were doing until they get around to really using it sometime later. And that's not dumb. It's not unreasonable to expect that you can trust that a product is what you actually ordered. I mean, consider this. Raphael Jumpf, the proud owner of three anti-barking dog deterrents all purchased on the same day, gave it five stars. And there's even international praise. Amazon customer says she loves the Blue Q bags so much. Wait a second. Bags? This review is about a completely different category of product, even though on first glance, the product page for this thing seems perfectly legit. What you're looking at here is the wombo combo of Amazon scammer tactics. The first is one that you're almost certainly familiar with. Fake reviews can be created en masse by either bots or humans, and especially with recent developments in large language models like ChatGPT, they can be difficult to detect with 100% accuracy. That explains just this thing is great or whatever, but it doesn't explain how that tote bag review ended up there. Ah, that's something different. That was added to the product page using a process called review merging. Basically, the seller takes an old listing of an actual product and then abuses their ability to edit that listing by changing literally everything about it, but leaving the reviews in place. This makes the product appear to have been sold to real customers and reviewed well by the aforementioned real customers while being much less expensive than paying real people to sit and write reviews and much harder to detect than simple bot generated reviews. And it has the added benefit of boosting search rankings. Let's say they started with a product from a super high volume category like uh, socks, for example. Then they take that sock and they convert it to a portable SSD. All of a sudden, it's on the best seller list. And then a quick ad spend later, it's in the sponsored posts. And boy, does Amazon ever make an effort to mix sponsored placements in with regular ones. Now, of course, you're probably thinking at this point, all that sounds like a pretty short term play. Can't Amazon just block the product and refuse to issue their payment when the negative reports roll in? In theory, yes. But think about how that might work. While some people will use the thing right away, figure out its crap with an SD card in it and report back, they are likely to be a very small percentage of the kind of people who would order something like this. People who are not that technical in the first place, right? And so these companies, knowing that they're dealing with a more mainstream user, can use a number of strategies to stall this process. First, they can engineer firmware hacks that will report different specs than the actual hardware, kind of like what we saw with the misreported capacity here and with the fake GPU scams that we've investigated in the past. This will dramatically delay the time between customers receiving the item and figuring out that it's bunk and all their data is actually gone. They can also gaslight you. You have a bad cable. Did you try updating your drivers? They can easily string someone along for a week or more with useless troubleshooting steps. And it's even possible that deep enough into that process, the customer will end up deciding, screw it, uh, maybe I, this is just too complicated for me. It was 20 bucks, I don't care that much. Another thing to consider is that even for a completely non-functioning product, most people don't go straight for a negative public review. I mean. I'm pretty understanding, stuff happens, right? So it makes sense that you would contact the seller for a replacement. But at that point, well, they can just lie and say, oh, I'm so sorry, you got a, a DOA one. That was the wrong capacity. Uh, 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 let us replace that for you. I mean, most people aren't gonna think to open up the chassis, Google a part number on the NAND package and figure out exactly what this is especially if doing that could compromise their ability to get a warranty replacement or a refund. They can also try to buy you off. By compensating one user for changing their review to five stars, they might be able to keep their listing up long enough to scam another five or 50 or 500 people. And then finally, once those negative reports do finally start to pile up, they can appeal them. All of this is in service of keeping those listings up and looking legitimate for as long as possible, or at least long enough to get their bi-weekly payout from Amazon. So yes, Amazon could just not pay them, but if they were to reduce the frequency of their payouts, or if they started overzealously withholding payouts from legitimate sellers, 
the damage to their brand could be catastrophic. The solution to that then is to just garnish anything that the seller owes from the next payout. But if that seller is banned, then there isn't going to be another payout and any customer refunds at that point are going to come out of Amazon's pocket, unless again, they want catastrophic damage to their brand by letting the customer foot the bill. Of course, there is another option. Fraud is by its very definition, illegal, literally everywhere on earth. So why doesn't Amazon just take legal action against these companies and get their money back? This might seem off topic, but stick with me here. Have you ever wondered what's up with the rando names that Chinese companies use to brand their wares? I mean, do they not have Google Translate to come up with something coherent? Actually, no, but surely they do have a dictionary, right? Yes, but here's the thing. If you want to sell on Amazon, you need to have a trademark and using real pronounceable words greatly increases the odds of somebody else having already trademarked your name, even if it is something stupid like dong swipe. So if your business model then involves scamming people and inevitably being reported and banned from the platform, then you're gonna need a lot of trademarks. So you make gibberish names like Govindvin or Detectus. Then when you get banned, you just change a single letter, file a new trademark and boom, you're back in scams, <clears throat> I mean business. And these businesses, or I'll call them operations, are constantly spinning up new shell companies in order to obfuscate business partnerships, move funds, and to dodge responsibility. Here's a great example. Nai Ai has been caught with their pants down here, or well, at least their vendor has. Look at all these generic listings that are just waiting to be filled in by their seller. For Shan Shen Hun Kui Ifei Chuang Sheng Mao Yu Zhang Gong Si. Yeah, that doesn't sound like a burner account, not even a little. Back to the idea then of getting money back from these guys. Even if China's legal system was fair and transparent and respected the rights of foreign entities, <laughs> the cost of going after hundreds or thousands of these individually small scale scammers that have completely disappeared into the ether would almost certainly be greater than the return. So it seems that Amazon has made the decision that the cost of compensating the victims of these scams is lower than the cost of preventing them in the first place, even if that means their entire shopping platform turns into a hellscape. Well, sort of. They apparently did spend $400 million in 2019 combating spam and scams, but there are just practical limits to what you can do. I mean, take the review merging exploit, for example. I mean, sure, they could just restrict everyone's ability to edit their product pages, but if they did that, then legitimate sellers would struggle to correct errors or ensure that their pages accurately reflect any small product revisions. Like say, for example, a new color that's available, by the way, in the US through the YouTube player itself. So go check that out. I mean, that's just one example of a legitimate reason that product ratings and reviews should survive a page edit. It's the same great insulated water bottle, just in a new fun white and red color scheme, right? Or like, what if you had a USB 3.0 product and all of a sudden you needed to change it to reflect the new USB 3.2 Gen 1 nomenclature? So I don't have the solution other than to remember the old adage. If it seems too good to be true, it might just be a good deal, but it also might be a scam. You know what else goes? The segue to our sponsor. Squarespace. Running your own business can be hard, but making your website doesn't have to be. With Squarespace, you get an all-in-one platform that makes it easy to get your website up and running quickly. You can grow your business online through their marketing features, including SEO support, email campaigns, and social tools. And they have a wide selection of award-winning mobile-optimized templates, and their commerce platform comes with everything you need from merchandising to checkout. If you need help, Squarespace offers help guides and a 24 seven support team. And we love Squarespace so much here, we even use it for linusmediagroup.com. Head to squarespace.com forward slash LTT to get 10% off today. If you guys enjoyed this video, maybe go check out the fake GPUs one. They really did put an incredible amount of work into making those things seem real, but they're not.